Well, as the tensions and talks uh, on the rise there regarding Russia and Ukraine, uh, you just saw the president there in the East Room of the White House side by side with his counterpart, uh, German Chancellor uh, Olaf uh, Scholz, uh, addressing reporters' questions and making it very clear. You heard from the chancellor there. We will act together. What exactly does that mean? Let's bring in my co-host, Terry Moran. He's uh, there in Kiev. Also, ABC News political director Rick Klein and ABC News national security and defense analyst Mick Mulroy for more. Uh, Terry, let's start with you. I, I, saw, I saw you, uh, your eyebrows raise as well when you heard we will act together, according to the chancellor. Uh, we will do the same, exact same as the United States. We will make this hard for Russia and all NATO is ready. Um, what do you make of it, Terry? Well, Kira, I think you're exactly right. That was the heart of this press conference and of this summit. We can call it a summit between allies, uh, uh, the United States and Germany, two of the most powerful countries in the world economically, the United States, the most powerful militarily. And that was the takeaway. They wanted to come out and say there's no daylight. There's no daylight between us. And on the one hand, you heard President Biden said we have agreed on swift and severe sanctions. And Chancellor Schultz saying, uh, we will act united on sanctions. We will now, what does that mean? Uh, does that mean the maximum package of sanctions? Probably not at the start. It's clear there's some deal making going on on what the actual uh, response to a Russian invasion of Ukraine, should it happen, would be that would be credible and severe enough uh, to cause Vladimir Putin to think twice. And there's a problem here. Uh, you want a signal to Vladimir Putin uh, that the pain would be so great that he should not move forward if he uh, chooses uh, with an invasion. But you don't want a signal, for example, to Germany's own domestic uh, economy, to the leaders of the economy, that the gas is about to get cut off or that there will be economic sanctions that could cripple their industries because the United States has, has acknowledged uh, that the sanctions package that the United States wants would harm the economies of many allies and the United States, but it's worth it. But you heard Joe Biden there at the end saying uh, that, expressing it as a math problem in some ways, that the gas that Germany needs, the president said, can be made up, we have made up in significant portions elsewhere. Last week, the United States and NATO named uh, the nation of Qatar a major non-NATO ally in order, it seems, to get their gas online. If the Russian oil was cut off from the world market, you can imagine that Saudi Arabia, a close ally of the United States, would pump more uh, oil. He's trying to lessen the pain. And finally, I, I think what we're seeing here is that Joe Biden, who has had a rough patch of it as president recently, and is our oldest elected president, an old man, but in some ways he is rising to what is the cha an old challenge, the Kremlin, and the means and mechanisms to respond to it, rallying NATO, stiffening its spine, looking for the most unified front against Moscow, are old problems that he is familiar with and comfortable with. We'll see if they work, but right now I thought we saw a very interesting and substantive uh, meeting between these two great powers. So just just to follow up, Terry, quickly, I know you've got to go. You're, you're working for World News tonight uh, with David Muir, of course. But just on the point you just made, so how did Biden do? I mean, this is a president with sagging poll numbers. He's been struggling to regain the confidence uh, of Americans. It sounds like this may possibly be a win for the president, the way he presented himself and how this press conference went over. Your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'll defer on that to the smartest political mind I know, Rick Klein, who is who I, I think is with us <laughs> as well. But what I can say, what I can say is, no question, I'm not gonna. But what 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 it seems to me is, as this situation grows more critical, and no one wants it to, but as it does grow more critical at the initiative of Russia, no one wanted Russia to put hundred thousand troops around the border to make strategic claims and legal claims on Ukraine uh, and rattle the saber like this. Uh, but as it gets more critical and the American public leans in to what is an international crisis of the old school, as I say, uh, I, I think there will be some voters who will say, you know, can you imagine if, if, if there were other people in the Oval Office, if President Trump or others were in the Oval Office? Uh, this, is, this is an old hand at work on an old problem. 
And depending on how it comes out, it could redound to his political benefit. But I think right now his priority is the security situation. Well, I'm surrounded by three great minds here, but you gave me the perfect segue. Rick, I will let you pick it up from here. Look, it's an opportunity for President Biden, and I think the unity that he showed next to the German chancellor, the new German chancellor, is important, given the fractures that we've seen exposed, uh, the frustration that the Ukrainians have felt over the fact that the Germans are not comfortable sending military aid. The idea that the president can go out today and say, uh, Russia, there will be one voice, Russia, there will be no Nord Stream 2. That may seem like an obscure issue, but it's of high political import here in Washington, where the Biden administration allowed that project to go forward in an effort to repair relations with Germany. Germany, but to say to the Russians, you are not going to get that pipeline, even though it's not the Germans or it's not the Americans to, 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 to grant, uh, you're not going to get that if you make this move, I think was an important point because it speaks to the economic power of Russia, the leverage that the Russians have over Europe, the fact that there's so, such a dependency on energy supplies from Russia and the fact that Nord Stream 2 would make that all, all the more easy is, I think, the important takeaway from this news conference. President Biden is, is, is trying to marshal the world community and the domestic community here in the United States behind the idea that there needs to be a firm uh, and fierce response to anything the Russians may do. We've seen them ratchet up the pressure. I think this was a significant step to be able to say whatever goes on with the United States, uh, Germany is going to be uh, by our side and specifically to Russia. You don't get this energy pipeline that's so critical for your economic development. All right, Mick, bring it full circle here. Will what we heard, will this strong package of sanctions, uh, Mick, uh, make Putin think twice here. Well, okay, Karen, at a time when Russia seems to be racing toward building the military capacity for a full-on invasion, now adding a maritime assault component, it was incredibly important that these two significant NATO allies, U.S. and Germany, stand united and talk about what will happen to Russia if they decide to do that. Yes, it could uh, negatively impact the uh, economies of Europe, as Terry said. But a full-on invasion will definitely impact the economies of Europe, as it will not stay contained in the Ukraine. It will spread rapidly to other countries. So whether it will be significant enough to get uh, President Putin to change his mind away from a full-on invasion, uh, I don't know. But let's hope that is, is the case. Uh, I, I think the diplomatic effort now needs to be able to find a way for him to save face and make that decision, which would benefit not only the Ukraine, not only NATO, but Russia, who will probably be the most negatively impacted by a decision for an invasion. All right, now we stand by and wait. Rick Klein, Terry Moran, also Mick Mulroy. Thanks, guys, so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.